You know, RFM celebrate Peter Tash works and life every February for the past four years. And this year is no different. We will be, we will be in Westmoreland this Sunday from six o'clock. We broadcast live. And this is the only reggae happening cultural event. That starts 6 o'clock in the morning. And by 10 o'clock, the place cock. Usually when you tell people, say things are going to start 8 o'clock in the night. Everybody are come 12 and 1 o'clock in the night. And then police come lock it down 2 o'clock. Well, this start 6 o'clock in the morning. And I guarantee you, no police not going to come, come tell you to lock it down. And we will be on the air broadcasting all over the world. Last year it was something else. And for those of you who have never been there, you have to be there. We are telling you that. We are commanding you to be there because it's an experience in experiences. Yeah, this is the cutting edge. Now, last week we could play a tape and all of my gone to me, hey, watch out. I must, I must start learning off the cost by the way. I took up my phone 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock a morning, you know. Believe you me, because I can look at my phone and know who call me. And pe some people have no conscience. Them hear you up on the radio for four hours. And them wait till the program done. And it's not like the program done and then call you in the studio. Them wait till the program done and then call you all an hour after. If you come ask you, Muta, you see the tape where you just play? I wait name. How me can get it? I pressure that on I pressure that Rasta. I don't have no conscience to do that. If you know, I have to get up again, to go up on the radio. In the day. Now, man, I want this cost for me. Why this is not a lead? Hey, on the day, you're going to A man, I'll call me an hour after the program done. I want me to discuss something with him where the talk about pan the program. At 3 o'clock in the morning, brethren, trust me, no feel no way, but if I want to call me 3 4 o'clock in the morning, I wait him here before him here. I want to do beautiful Jamaican words. He must know said Muta Baroka in a, such a vexation that this is only the world where we can't find them hours a morning. Day. Okay, so for those of you who want to find the thing that we played last week, about black history and the different things in black history. If you if you go to if you go to go if you go to YouTube, all right, that's why I say you got YouTube. If you go to YouTube and put in dirty little secrets about black history, its heroes, you will find it. Put in dirty little secrets about black history, its heroes, you will find it. And I think the man's name is. Dr. Claude Anderson. So, so if you put in Dr. Claude, C-L-A-U-D, Anderson, and then you have dirty little secrets about black history, you will find what I played last week that people call me 3, 4 o'clock in the morning if you come ask me, wait name. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so, Black History Month. Well, why are you listening to this? This is a, a two-day news this, two-day interview. Listen to this. Hey, Goodman. As the country marks President's Day today, we turn to an aspect of U.S. history often missed, the complicity of American presidents with slavery. The first person of African descent to enter the White House was most likely a slave. The nation's capital, Washington, D.C., once hosted markets where human beings were sold for profit. Slaves built some of the country's most famous landmarks, including Philadelphia's Independence Hall, Boston's Faneuil Hall, James Madison's Montpelier. Uh, last week, President Obama mentioned the role of slaves in building one specific landmark, Thomas Jefferson's plantation estate in Charlottesville, Virginia. Obama was touring the home of America's third president with French leader Francois Hollande. This is what Obama had to say about Monticello. This house also represents uh, the, the complicated history uh, of the United States. Uh, we just visited downstairs where 
we know that slaves helped to build this uh, magnificent structure uh, and the uh, complex relations that Jefferson, uh, the drafter of the Declaration of Independence, had, had to slavery. Uh, and it's a reminder for uh, both of us that uh, we are going to continue to fight uh, on behalf of uh, the rights of uh, all peoples, uh, something that uh, I know France has always been committed to and we are committed to as well. President Obama speaking last week during French President François Hollande's visit to the U.S. We're joined now by Clarence Lussain, who's documented the racial history of Washington, D.C. and the presidency. His most recent article is Missing from President's Day, The People They Enslaved. Clarence Lussain writes, quote, More than one in four U.S. presidents were involved in human trafficking and slavery. These presidents bought, sold, and bred enslaved people for profit. Of the 12 presidents who were enslavers, more than half kept people in bondage at the White House, he writes. Clarence Hussein is author of The Black History of the White House, a member of the D.C. Commission on African American Affairs, also professor at American University in Washington, D.C. Professor Hussein, welcome to Democracy Now! So talk about this history of slavery and U.S. presidents. Well, I'm glad that you pointed out that uh, President Obama, when he went to Jefferson's home, pointed out the the slave history there. Uh, But it's also important to note that the most iconic building in the U.S., the one that represents the country to the world, the White House, uh, also was a place where uh, slavery existed. Uh, Not only that, it was built by uh, slaves. And none of that has been uh, publicly acknowledged. There is over a million people who visit the White House every year, who go on tours, who come for meetings. And you can go through that building and never have a sense of that important history. And that's critical because I think President's Day should be a period of critical reflection, not some kind of blind celebration. But it should be one where we really try to get a better sense of the country's history. And part of that history, part of what... I think resonates even to this day is that significantly before the Civil War, nearly every U.S. president was a slave owner, which meant that they were compromised on the issue of slavery, and that had repercussions that, you know, redounded through uh, history. So it's really critical, I think, that we have that acknowledgement because we uh, grow up, we go to school, we have history classes, and none of that history is, is told to us. So give us a black history of U.S. presidents, as you call it. Well, in looking at the um, White House, and I use that as the prism to try to look at this longer history that basically led up to President Obama, one of the things that we find that's missing in that history is the voices of people uh, particularly African Americans who were enslaved uh, during that uh, long, long, long history. And that was critical because when you think about George Washington, Madison, um, uh, Monroe, uh, all of the early presidents who wrote the Declaration of Independence, they wrote the Constitution, they wrote the Articles of, Confe- of Confederation, all of these documents, these funding, founding documents that extol the principles of democracy, liberty, uh, equality, uh, they were living a contradiction. And that contradiction is that every single day of their life, every moment in their life, they were surrounded by people who were enslaved. Now, fortunately, uh, because of some of the historic records that have been kept, we now know the, uh, who some of those people were. George Washington, for example, when he was president and his presidency was in Philadelphia, had at least nine individuals uh, with him who were enslaved. Uh, only Maria Judge, for example, who was a young woman of about 22, who escaped from George Washington. She escaped. Uh, this was in 1796 when she found out that Martha Washington was planning to give her away as a wedding gift, and she made contact with the uh, free black population in Philadelphia, uh, was able to escape. Now, this is remarkable because we're talking about a young woman who basically traveled nowhere by herself, who escapes from the most powerful person on the planet, 
pretty much. Uh, certainly the most powerful person uh, in the United States. Uh, her story is important because she lived, uh, she outlived Washington. She lived to be, I believe, in her 80s uh, and lived a life where she learned to read, became active in her community. You had Hercules, who was Washington's cook, who also escaped from Washington. So there are people who were in and around the White House who had stories to tell that are part of that history uh, that we literally were never taught about uh, for all of the years that you know we took schooling and we took classes in history. And so I thought it was important. And there are others uh, who have written to re uh, enter into the historic narrative uh, the stories of these uh, these these individuals because they really are critical if you really want to understand the politics of George Washington or the politics of jo- uh, Thomas Jefferson or any of the other presidents who held slaves. Tell us about Paul Jennings. Paul Jennings again is another fascinating uh, character. He was enslaved to the Madisons, to James and Dolly Madison. A, he was, in fact, the first individual to actually write about uh, working in the White House. He published a memoir, this was in the late 1860s, uh, that talked about the time when he was in the White House. And he was there in 1814. He was there when the British literally were burning down the city and was part of the contingent of folks who were attempting to get materials out of the White House uh, and preserve them before the British came. So he really had a fascinating history. He was supposed to be free when James Madison died, but Dolly Madison uh, basically reneged on the deal. So he it took him a few years to buy his freedom, uh, which he eventually did. And then he actually uh, came to help Dolly Madison. She fell on hard times. Uh, she wasn't wealthy. She wasn't a wealthy person, and she was and part of the uh, social elite of Washington. And so when she fell on hard times and her family and friends abandoned her, Jennings would often bring her food, would bring her money, and basically would look after her. Uh, but what was also important about James Jennings, Jennings is Paul that Jennings. he also was, Paul Jennings, I'm sorry, is that he was also central to the largest attempt at escaping from slavery that happened in Washington, D.C. Uh, this happened in 1848. Uh, for a number of reasons, the, uh, the, the escape attempt failed, uh, but Jennings was never uh, brought in. He was never seen as being part of it, and, and uh, it was only literally after his death uh, that it was revealed that he had played a very critical role in that. So my point is that you had these individuals who were enslaved to presidents who really had fascinating kinds of stories and fascinating kinds of lives uh, that we should know about because they really are also part of the history of the White House and the history of the presidency. I want to play a clip from the trailer of the film Lincoln, directed by Steven Spielberg, released last year, about President Abraham Lincoln and the fight to end slavery in the United States. In this clip, you first hear Abraham Lincoln, played by Daniel Day-Lewis, followed by the voices of Thaddeus Stevens, the Congress member from Pennsylvania, and Mary Todd Lincoln, the First Lady. Let's go to that clip. We are stepped out upon the world stage now, with the fate of human dignity in our hands. Blood's been spilled to afford us this moment now, now, now. Abraham Lincoln has asked us to work with him to accomplish the death of slavery. No one's ever been loved so much by the people. Don't waste that power. That was an excerpt of Lincoln. Uh, Clarence was saying, talk about Abraham Lincoln and slavery. Lincoln, the Lincoln administration was a turning point in terms of the history of the relationship between African Americans and the White House. It was during Lincoln's tenure that the first meeting took place between a U.S. president and leaders of the black community. This happened in uh, 1862, I believe. Now, this was critical because up until that point, although African Americans... Uh, particularly free African Americans in the North have been organized and have been raising issues, policy issues, issues around slavery. Uh, they simply had no uh, access to the White House or to policy makers. Lincoln, however, opened up some of that space. And part of what I think moved Lincoln from being not just simply anti-slavery, but ultimately to recognizing that you had to eliminate slavery, that abolition was the only path forward, in part came because of his discussions with black leaders. 
not only church leaders, but people like Frederick Douglass, but also, and this is in the film, discussions with Elizabeth Keckley. In the film, she's the woman who's often seen with uh, Mary Lincoln. She's played by Reuben, uh, Gloria Reuben in the film. And the film is a little bit disingenuous in that you could think that maybe she was a servant, but in fact, she was an independent businesswoman who had become basically best friends with Mary uh, Lincoln. But also, she spent a great deal of time at the White House having discussions with Abraham Lincoln about race, about slavery, about the future of the country. And again, her story is important uh, to be told because she, again, was part of a contingent of African Americans who sought to influence the presidency uh, and, and to address issues that uh, needed to be dealt with. And so it, the uh, movie Lincoln doesn't quite take you there to show you that side of the people who influenced Lincoln, but it's an important part of understanding what happened in the Civil War and how Lincoln actually got to the point where he said the only way out of this situation is that slavery has to end. Then that moment, that meeting, um, eight, August 14th, 1862, Abraham Lincoln does something unprecedented. He meets with a small delegation of uh, black leaders, uh, clergy. Right, and at that point, Lincoln had already decided to issue the Emancipation Proclamation. There was some debate about which date to issue it on, but he was already moving in a position where he saw the country's future uh, as a future without slavery. And these leaders that he met with were people who mostly were tied to uh, the black church community, uh, but people who also had ties to abolitionists, to people who were active uh, in other kinds of issues around the country. So that really was kind of a turning point. And since that point, uh, there has been a considerable amount of effort on the part of African Americans to negotiate and to meet with and to lobby uh, not only in Congress, uh, but the president uh, themselves. Uh, talk about the buildings, these iconic structures that kids, adults go to in Washington, D.C. to honor this country, the White House, the Capitol. Who built it? This is really important because I think there may be some sense uh, more generally that Washington owned slaves and Jefferson owned slaves. But I think there's a general ignorance about the role of people who were enslaved in actually building the nation's capital. In 1790, after the country was founded, the Congress passed legislation to build a capital. Washington, D.C. did not exist. And so there was a decision that land that was ceded from Maryland and from, from Virginia would become the nation's capital and it had to be built and it would take 10 years. This is why Washington spent all of his presidency either in New York or in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, but to build Washington, D.C., you needed labor. And George Washington, who was more or less in charge of the project, initially wanted labor to come from Europe, but it was very, very difficult to get people to come all the way over on these really harsh trips to work in basically a jungle. So they basically re relied on enslaved labor, which meant cutting down trees, moving rocks, digging holes, you know, all of the harsh, harsh labor that had to be done literally to clear uh, the area. But it also included skilled labor, people who were carpenters and plasterers. Uh, we know for a fact that both at the White House and the building that became the White House and the U.S. Capitol, there were at least five highly skilled carpenters who worked for years to build those two buildings. And again, uh, this needs to be acknowledged because it reflects that ongoing contradiction, what President Obama talked about uh, with President Holland, of this conflict between the principles of equality and democracy and the reality of slavery. Now, in the Capitol a few years ago, there were two plaques that were put up to honor or to acknowledge the people who were enslaved that built the Capitol. One is on the House side and one is on the Senate side uh, in the rotunda. And in Philadelphia, at the pavilion where the Liberty Bell uh, exists, uh, the new Liberty Bell Pavilion was actually built over the old house where, or the land where George Washington lived when he was president. There's also a plaque there that acknowledges the people who were enslaved to Washington during the time of his presidency. What we do not have yet 
uh, and and it actually may happen, uh, is a something in the White House that would have that kind of acknowledgement. Final comment, Clarence was saying, about what you think we should understand on this President's Day. And take it all the way you write about Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, I think that the most important thing is to understand that there's a long and rich history of African Americans in the White House long before President Obama. And all of that history tells us a great deal, I think, about the current situation we face where we continue to see racial disparities and racial discrimination pretty much across the board. The story you did earlier about the shootings in Florida, for example, I think in part reflect and an unawareness of this history and the degree to which the country still has not acknowledged and reconciled all uh, this past. Uh, a year ago, I went with students to Rwanda, and we visited a great, a, a large number of memorials, and it became so clear to me that the degree to which the country acknowledges its past in an honest and straightforward way goes a long way towards healing and reconciliation. Uh, doesn't necessarily end up with all the justice that needs to be happen, happening, but it certainly is the first step. The acknowledgement and recognition of your history uh, becomes really important. Ari of Sam, thought provoking, always smoking, lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. I was just playing a clip from an interview that was done today. Because, you know, them have president there in America and there's not mention of the, 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 the relationship between these presidents and slaves. I know them used to use slaves, including them first president, Abraham Lee, not sorry, <laughs> Washington, who had slaves. Used to trade them for molasses. Barrel of molasses was traded for our ancestors in America. But the reason why we play that is that in a Jamaica, we have some stories to tell. And we're talking about outside of Paul Bogle, outside of the, 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 the usual, George William Garden, Sam Sharp, you know, the usual things we hear about them people, the nanny who fought. But the intellectuals, and it's only one system you see I do that really is very in a shepherd who is actually digging up names, names, putting names to people. Because it's not just some people that have happened, but the people them who in slavery that have names. But there is so much struggle that was taking place that it's really weird for no say Jamaica can identify more people than the ones them that them call heroes, excluding Taki which should be a hero. But there's so much struggle that took place in a Jamaica against slavery. That is just weird that we should have just... It's not that we don't want to talk about it. But we know about Paul Bogle, and we know about Sam Sharp, and we know about Nanny, and we know about all of these ones. But there's so much more that took place that... There should be some study and some, what we call, serious digging up of some other people who fought and struggled in this country for really make the Europeans them recognize that slavery wasn't going to last forever. And let no one tell you anything different. It's lose. Them was losing money. Why them come to the decision to abolish the slavery? It's not good heart. Them never, just all of a sudden get good heart. And we know you have people in England who was against it. But it's not because those people that are against it, why? The people them declare it to abolish it. It was the struggle 
of our four parents for Bondon Plantation and kill Bakramasa. It was that struggle that make them start to lose money. Not only in the British colonies, but also in the French and Dutch colonies. Why you think that Haiti was paying reparation money to France? Is a loss to the French by the rebelliousness of these Asian people to struggle against a superpower. And they was losing money, losing money to the point where now them did have to say no, no more. But then now them declare that this money that was lost because of no more slavery should be paid in reparation. And it was the same thing in Jamaica where the planters got reparation money for money for repairing their losses because of the abolition, abolition of slavery. And then we find that them don't tell you, say, it's true, a whole heap of plantation did a bundong and them key and did a go to ashes. Why some of them did have to run left Jamaica, run go back to England and say, why no, we can't take that no more now, we are lose too much. We are kill them, but them have some way if it decides uh, this thing and have a work. So that should be or must be mentioned in the annals of our history. That black people never just sit down and fold them arm and just love up slavery. Whenever they just love it up so. We fought the good fight. And we help to slay, to liberate ourselves. It's not like every time you see a movie. The only movie I don't see a white man come help a black man in a, in Sankofa. It's the only slave movie I look upon and not see. No white man come help the black man to get out of, <laughs> get out of slavery. But every, even the one the other day, 12 years a slave. And this is supposed to be a true story written by a slave too. But somewhere along the line, I'm itching this little God-fearing white man to come help the black man. To come tell the other white man him that him was really who him same is. And if you look down upon the history of slave movies, you always see that a white man is the hero in the slave movie. What a terrible thing. It's like slaves never liberate themselves nowhere. It's like slaves never was slaves was so stupid and passive that them did love up slavery to the point where them never even rage not struggle against it. That is what we were led to believe. We were led to believe that they punish us so much. That we had no impetus to fight. And some of us did not fight. But some of us preferred dead. Even to the point of jumping out the slave ship them. And when we come here the torture. And the pain that them carry our ancestors through. The mothers them who was pregnant. Wanted to protect them children. So they brought up the children to be obedient servants of the master because when they remember what their husbands went through, when they tie horses on each arm and leg of the, the slave and sit the pregnant mother in front of that torture and when they beat the ass, and the hands and the feet of the slave, slave who was the husband of the woman, it just pop out. And they ask them, run down with part of the hand over that side. And one next ask, run down with the foot over there. So it's not me I say it, you know, it was written. It is written in the annals of history that this was what was happening. When a mother 
to be seen it happening to her husband. You think she going to want her son grow up and talk about him a fight against slavery? No, 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 no. Obedient, be a nice slave servant. Yet still, in the bushes of Jamaica, in the cane piece of Jamaica, you did have some slave there where him not take no talk. Him not take no talk. All film thing is for plan for burn down how much he feel and burn down how much he feel. Him no business. Him prefer to die and yonder ill than to live a slave. And that is what our ancestors did. They fought the oppressors to the point where the oppressors was losing money. Losing. They never supply enough sugar cane to make rum and to make sugar. Two drug. That alone should have make we don't want to drink rum and eat sugar. Believe you me. Just the idea that it is because of this need for rum and sugar that perpetuated slavery in this part of the world, in Jamaica. We could talk about Jamaica. The continuous effort by the slave master to produce rum and sugar because the Europeans were so addicted to this drug. Because the two of them is a drug. Sugar is a drug. Rum is a drug. They wanted the more and more and more. And the more, you they have to be producing more and more and more. And there come a time when they wasn't producing enough to satisfy the market to make a profit. Because there was too much burning down a plantation of in, in Jamaica. Taki start a fire in a St. Mary and it end up in a Westmoreland. Taki, the same man from St. Mary there. It start a fire in a St. Mary and it burn go straight out of Westmoreland. Him cause other slaves to come rise up. Who the things to them so passive that them now have rise up. Taki, rebellion instilled in a whole heap of old slave. That them should be slave no more, but it be for them burn down the house and run away because them never have nowhere to live in anywhere. They never own no place in any way. So the little scraps is where they get from back a massa in the house. Taki come show them, say, watch your man. And that to not satisfy with. It's freedom or death. Freedom or death. That is the cry. Paul Bogle out of Moran Pine and say, color for color, black for black. Them no one tell say Paul Bogle is ball out that. Paul Bogle say, color for color. I just saw him at seat. This is a deacon. When them say Paul Bogle, the deacon, we used to go to church every Sunday, go preach. When him start to rebel, him say, Kola fi Kola. I just sweat go. And take a bun place from left to right. And make other slaves say, hey, I don't go on. It look like freedom in here, you know. Make a bun down the house, yeah. And run. And from St. Mary to Westmoreland, fires was blazing in the night skies. And the guys them was fretting. And in England them sit and counsel and say, watch a man, this thing I get away. And then the other people say, but you say, I tell you no, it's an inhumane thing. We should stop this thing. But if them never did a lose, if them was losing money. But if them never did a lose. If them was losing money. No Wilbur Force and no Quaker could have stopped it. Them could have tell you about Wilbur Force little more. In our history. Because when we are going to school, Wilbur Force, we hear stop it. And the Quakers. Them could have tell you about Wilbur Force little more if Wilbur Force was Jesus Christ himself. And these guys never did have make no money. 
and them that make money, sorry, if Jesus, if, if Wilberforce was Jesus Christ himself, and these slave people was making money, Wilberforce could have never stopped them. It's when them sum up the whole thing and them say, well, we are lose too much. Then why is it the plant has to have to get 20 million pounds as reparation money for them lattes, which was never given to the slave? In America, they promised the slave them 40 acre and a mule. How much American black people right now own one acre land in America? They promised black people 40 acre and a mule in America. Right now, the 40 acre there, if you multiply that from then time, it could have me the whole of America. And if you have meant, if, if you multiply a mule, I know it could have been many Mercedes Benzes. <laughs> you think it's joke. What did they promise the slaves in Jamaica? Nothing. So, what do you think we do? We have to fend for ourselves, you know. Because squat here, so one piece of land we are not our own. When slave mass back and mass and realize say, slave the panel land is either you get shot or you end up a runway or you just kill the plantation owner. And that's why it is there. You just go rob him. Because where you go do now? You can't go plan nothing. Because none of the land under yours is either the crown land or back and mass land. Mr. McIntosh. Mr. McGregor, Mr. White, Mr. Brown, I feel them land. So when them say them free you, free you for the war, for war, where? Can they never take you for ship and carry you back to Africa? That was desirable. Them could have repatriated to it. Them could have said, well, we're free you now. We're going to have some ship we're carrying you back to Africa. No. Them have we run up and down from Westmoreland to Moran Point. From Negril to Moran Point, I try to figure out where we're going to get, or we're going to sustain ourselves. And we have to go back to the slave master, see him slave master, and ask him for work, and hope say, him will give you a little food, and catch up a little hot pan on top of him, him, him little land, and work there from sunrise to sunset, and say, we're not slave again, you know, because we're not slave again, we can't know, we can't leave as we want, but, we can't leave because if we leave, we now get the little food where Bakramasa give it from the plantation. So we between that between that devil and a deep blue sea. That here we are claiming say we're free, but free to do what? What were the slaves free to do in Jamaica? Because at the point of freedom, you do have no land. So you have to go back to the same man who you claim free you. Then as you say, it's a recycling and a regurgitating of the same thing that happened hundreds of years ago with our farmers, um, ancestors, our forefathers. It's the same thing that happened to we are now, right now in Jamaica, where we see him say we're free. We're free to do what? Then as you say, the slave master them, Control the little house, the boss slave them. That the, the, the boss slave them have to go back to the same guy who claims him free, you know. Who you say you look freedom from. Instead of you develop yourself, self reliant, the greatest science, you go back to the slave master for begging money for see if he can rectify your situation that him put you in a, a him put you in a, you know. Sislava sang him say, white man, God can't save you from white man oppression. White man, God cannot save you from white man oppression. So if you feel, say, after white man, God put you in a certain oppression, and you go back and pray to that God there now, to save you from the same white man who created that God there, you must be sick, man. You're sick. If you feel, say, IMF and World Bank, I could take we out of the ditch where we find ourselves in. Now. We are them, are them first under a different name. Them, was, them wasn't World Bank. Them wasn't IMF. 
But they was dear, they was existing under different names. It's the same people them. It's the same people them who did pack up the ship them and carry them come here so and carry them go to Liverpool and carry them go to Bordeaux in France. It's the same people them I run the IMF, run the World Bank run all of the big multinational corporations, the same people they might do it. So tell me something now. In free you. And go say, go fend for yourself. And you, real, you go out and realize, say, certain things is not certain things before you look for Africa. Because you did Afri Africa all the way, but you turn your face from Africa. You turn your face from Africa and are looking at the backyard to get the crumbs where him have. And when you can't get the crumbs where him have, you go and go and knock on it. And go beg him the crumbs. And him say, all right. The only way you can't get the crumbs is to do this. The only way you can't get the crumbs is to do this. And him stipulate certain things to you. Say, this is what you have to do. And then you get up realize, say, what? You's a slave still. You's a slave. The members of parliament in Jamaica is slaves. The preacher who promised the people them pie in the sky are slaves. How oh, can Jamaican people, after we supposed to lead this charge for freedom and liberation, we are Jamaican people give the world a new religion and give them a, re, a, a, a music that liberate the hearts and minds of black people all over the world and people who find themselves in oppressive state. How oh, can we look to these bossy slave were in a coat and tie and gown in a church. And at them have put me right back into slavery. Them have a right back into slavery. The whole of them. Them have used them European intelligence. We can't counteract European consciousness. Because them don't set it, them have certain ways with them, they say one and one equal two, and can't go no other way. And you have to come out of that box if you realize about weird. You can't do it a different way, no. You can't do it a different way. But what? Them afraid to do it a different way. Because the guy them have them in a some vice. You know any vice? Them have in a vice, man. But them just turn the thing and turn it and just tighten it by you, tighten it by you. And they hear them say, well, you know, say, the IMF, you know, we have to get some loans and then they will stipulate certain things that we can come out of the, the problem we're having. And you see now, we have passed the test, therefore the economy is, back, is, is, is going on the right track. And we pass the IMF test too. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the slave is still wallowing in the pig field. And loving it. Because there comes a time now when evil, the squalor of pigs, is beautiful to the guy who don't know nothing about beauty. And most of we are slaves, yes, so we not get used to beauty to the point where we can say this is beautiful. We either the walla walla and them put we in it. The bosses slave them, the house, the house niggers. Them call them the house niggers. Malcolm X talk about them, where them sit down around the dining table with the slave master and not eating nothing and talk about them dining. You cannot be a diner if you are not eating round the dining table. And if the guy sit you round the dining table, we clean up the mess when him don't eat. And you come say you was dining with the slave master, you're a fool. Malcolm is to tell me about that. Sitting round the dining table don't make you a diner. You have to be eating round the dining table to make you a diner. And when a guy have you at him foot, and when the bone drop off, you feel good for grab the bone. And three, four, five, six, seven, eight away down this or grab the bone. And then we eventually, you know, we start to you know, because the bone so little. One, I will grab the bone. And the other four, I will go fight off the little one will have the bone. Forget piece of the bone there. Because the one who get the bone, nah, you will none of the bone there because I'm so glad for the bone and consider that a slave master bone. So the other four, 
niggas we don't listen. If you fight that one, forget the bone. So it's a bone thing I go on. And slave master, it's a weird say the bone drop there. Because sometimes him deliberately drop a bone if you see what going to happen. If you see how much of the nigga them down there to go kill one another. Yeah, man. See, they will drop a next bone down there. See, they're the one they couldn't get the bone. So him guess why? Him take the knife off of the table and stab that one there. And take away the bone from him. And it goes on and on and on and on. Because you have some bossy slave in a parliament and in a the church. And oppress the people them. Subliminally and consciously, they must suppress the people them. They must oppress the people them. They must make the people them live in an illusion. The politician have promised them good living when they are alive. And they must have the preacher have promised you good living when you're dead. And them have you know quagmire voting every five years, every four years, you vote for this one, vote for this one. That's a round circle. It's like the dog I try to catch him tail. Uh, the, 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 the dog I run down the rabbit with the, 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 the carrot. And they don't realize it's not a real rabbit. Because they have the carrot. And always a wooden rabbit I run around the field. And the, the dog I run it and they can't catch it. And we like crab in barrel. Because when we see that one come out, we have to hang up on the one where they're near to the top. And by the time we hang up on the one we're near to the top, everybody drop off, drop down back in the barrel. We are slaves. And it's the same guys them who did carry cross here. It's them still in control. Them still in control. It's not nobody else that control the thing. The same people them who first land from the west coast of Africa. And take up some African people and bring them on here, so and say they're going to turn them in a slave with sugar. In America, it was more cotton. In Africa, it was sugar and rum. In the Caribbean, it was sugar and rum. The same people, them who create that industry, is the same people, them right now, around the IMF. And the same people them are run the Chase Bank and the International Corporation them and the gas BP and Wall Street and London Stock Exchange and all of these places. It's the same people them are running. Because we, we, who is the black survivors, recognize them from them time there. In at the bottom of the ship, we recognize them. Cutting edge, RFM. Yeah, sometimes it's not education, it's intelligence. We want to tell you about the cultural identity, cutting edge cultural identity, celebrating 28th Black History Month celebration. Usually they have it at Maypen Courthouse, Car Park, and this is no difference this year. This is a, a stellar event that always takes place right there at Maypen Courthouse, Car Park. This year the guest speakers will be Verena Shepherd, Miguel Lan. And Dr. Otep talking about holistic healing. And this is at 6 p.m. And the in, well, we have the, the vibes there. We see Janine will be performing and history man. So this is this Sunday. You know, say every time we go to, every time we go, it, it, it's weird. Usually our trip on that Sunday is Peter Tash place. Then we go to Porch in motion, then we end up a uh, mere pen. We will want to tell you also about Porch in motion this Sunday too, which is another stellar event. This is Yasu Safari from motion. This is happening in Mandeville, and this is something we happen continuously for years. This year we're not going to perform on it, but we see that there's a big lineup of great poets and artists. Because it's not only poetry on it. You know, I remember last year, I think, last year, I did have Toots, a Toots, a, yeah, I think a Toots, I can book the day on it. But these are events that is very important to our expression of our cultural um, um, creativity. So, when well, may I say that first, we say this, that we usually leave, leave, um, 
Peter Tosh event and then journey to Mandeville, then we journey to Clarendon. And we have to say this is the, the this is the route that is taken. And we want to remind you now that on the twentieth and on and, and Sunday it is no different. This Sunday the journey is still the same. We want to tell you that the, the Verena Shepherd, I was talking about Verena Shepherd and I mentioned Verena Shepherd before that actually we have Verena Shepherd is doing some serious work, historical work that need to be lauded because we need some faces to these people. Now we want to make a statement as so we are saying, yeah, we are talking about the same people them. I came on that ship hundreds of years ago. I was on the ship. I was on one of those ships. And it's not all of we come here as slaves. Some of we come here to free slaves. The thing is, every black person will come here so, land here so, as a slave. No, him land here so because him want to come here. Because him recognize after a period of years that, that some things are going fishy over the side of the water there. Because some of them both they take all two, three months to reach us so. And they might recognize about wait, something now, something not right. Something not right with this thing here. So him put himself in the position for come over here and recognize, oh, something really not right. I did there. And if you think there's some different people from you, the dead there. You make a sad mistake because the same people then we are asked reparation here right now. If I know we, then I owe. If I know we, they got through it, then it's O. I am my ancestor, and my ancestor is I. If there was no I, there wouldn't be no ancestor. If no ancestor, there wouldn't be I. It's a reciprocation of time and space, transcending all time and space. I was one of those who was running up and down in Africa and becoming great. And a guy just come snatch me and carry me, come cross here, so. I was one of those who get hung. I said one, no, 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 different. I don't look at it like there's a different person than I did do it. It's I, I them take from Africa and bring over here, so. I don't descend it from African. I am an African. I know descended from African. A descendant of an African sound like he's really not an African. You know, descended from African like white people. You have to go check the Arab them. You go find out who descended from African. Or the European them who descended from African. I know descended from African. I is an African. Everything else come out of I. Out of darkness come forth light. Darkness is not the absence of light. Darkness absorb light. That's what darkness do. Absorb light. And it's not that we do have any light because who else absorb the sun? Like African people. Look how much sun, look how the sun bright. And when we catch it in our skin and it become melanin, there is no glow that we can say the sunlight is glowing on us. But we have it in a way, the vitamin D. Black people have a different glow because with dark skin. But it's the sun. That's why they eat the Greeks them call with Ethiopians. And the place where them find them call Ethiopia. Because the word Ethiopia mean land of the burnt faces because they recognize that it was the sun that give these people this look. They were so close to the equator in that tropical region of the world that the sun penetrate them skin and them skin absorb the sunlight into a different kind of light. So them say, Osiris and Horus. Horus 
is the Son. And the Son glorify the Mother, Isis. And Osiris is awakened from the dead. Yet he was not dead. I never dead. I was here before and will be here all the while. But if you kill I today, you can't kill I tomorrow. Don't feel no way. It's my words, them. It's not bon, it's not Bujubad that words. <laughs> it's not Bujubad that words. It's fear words Bujubad that take. It's that I take Bujubad that You kill I today, you can't kill I tomorrow. Today you laugh, tomorrow your sorrow. Today you laugh, tomorrow is your sorrow. So don't feel safe. If you kill it today, you can't kill it tomorrow. You make a sad mistake. I don't dead twice. So, we must recognize how important it is to understand the concept of indoctrination. I know indoctrination run deep in our psyche to the point where we start to use what we learn as benchmarkers for what we want to know. So we have a thing around the corner named faith. And we believe what they tell us, even though we did not investigate what they say to us. But when we start to investigate what they said to us and what we believe, we recognize that it only helped to keep them in power and keep us in subjugation. Powerful people will never educate powerless people in what it means to take the power away from them. Because the aim of powerful people is to stay powerful by any means necessary. And when you have power given to some bossy slave, them even worse than the slave master. Worse. Wasara, according to Miss Lou. Them wasara than the slave master. When you see you give some niggas. Power. Why you think, say, so much youth join police force? And then now them have power because them have gun and them have a uniform to back them. Why you think them does no care? Because them have something named power to back them up. Why you think a youth, a 16, 17, 18 year old youth, go in a garrison and get a, a, a gun? And a, and, and a dance say, use a gun, you go hustle. That youth, if you say, them have power because the gun there, the phallic symbol. Give him a certain power. Him feel almost like a superman. And this is the way of how the Western world create superficial thinking and make we feel say it's real. Them sell your illusion and make the illusion look like it's a reality. And then we start to you now use that illusion as part of our reality. Not recognizing that the more you use that, is the more you will make the other person more powerful. We are like the puppet fed words by the ventriloquist. Because sometimes you miss the mouth. That is putting the words into the puppet's lips. So you only see the puppet speaking. Not recognizing that the puppet is a puppet. He has no power to speak. If he's not given the words in his mouth by the ventriloquist. But you forget that is a ventriloquist giving the puppet the words. Because you're not noticing the ventriloquist. You're noticing the puppet. So when the ventriloquist says something, you don't watch the ventriloquist. You watch the puppet because the puppet is what you think you are hearing. That is illusion. And that is illusion with them sell 
Because they are ventriloquists putting words and putting actions in our minds. And we regurgitate these actions, believing says we are doing it. Which is really we are doing it, but not consciously. Subliminally, we do it. Not recognizing that most of the things them that we do, say, think, and believe in is coming from the ventriloquists. What a terrible thing. We are all controlled by the ventriloquists. And what is this ventriloquist that we speak of? You figure it out. You figure it out. Emperor Eilis Lattis said, until the philosophy that all one race superior and the other inferior, in talking about a philosophy. And the black people might talk to you know. That speech was spoken to not black people. But in say until the philosophy that all this is that there's a philosophy that all one race superior until the colour of a man's skin is of no more significant than the colour of his eyes. Is not I set up that? Is a group of people set up that philosophy. So I couldn't, I, I, I listen to what I talk about, I talk to. I talk to a group of people who know, say, them set up a system. And until that system is crumbled, we Africans, we, him include himself in it. Him say, we Africans will fight if it is necessary. Because we know we are confident. In the victory of good over evil. There's a disregard for human beings in this philosophy that I last like speak of. And I last like direct him attention and in words to a specific thing that is happening to African people. Because I have no philosophy that all one race superior and the other inferior. I have no philosophy like that. I just like say has no philosophy like that. This philosophy that all one race superior over the next one and the color of a man's skin different from the color has been perpetuated by the same people them who carry from Africa come over here that say we is not human being that in America you couldn't vote because you is one fifth of a human being that them use a lynch tree and take a penis put it in a bottle and carry it to a souvenir. This is the philosophy we are talking about. I listen to Lassie talk about until that day. Can we look at the philosophy? I will see it still exists, you know. And we still have to fight it. We still have to fight that philosophy. We Africans have to fight our confidence in the victory of good over evil. A guy I try to turn around the talking like say, him want to tell me, me, black people who never take nobody from them land and bring them come and nowhere. And I just like to come recognize that there is a philosophy that a whole one race superior, that is a philosophy that a guy want to turn it around and make it sound like say, it's me I just like to talk to. I never create that philosophy against African people. His Majesty is recognizing himself as an African and I talk to some people who know, say, look at them, create this thing here, you know, and look at, we don't better fix this thing here, you know, because until that day, if we don't fix it, we Africans are going to fight. Bob Marley come turn it around and say, a war. Bob Marley call it war. I could be war if it don't fix. His Majesty said, we will fight. We will fix that. And I create that. I will create that and we must fix it. But you have some bossy slaves. We are maintaining it. Because they put the bossy slaves in them big place like church. That guys have to go in a church to rectify certain things like Paul Bogle. Like a whole heap of the, the, the leaders them in America. They have to go to the church, go use the church as a, a secret society underground movement 
for dismantle slavery. That is where black people use church for do. Them time there. When we didn't know so we are in a slavery. But going to church, God use the church as underground movement for plan and scheme against this black grandmas of a bond on implantation and broke up back and put in him drinks. And that we used to do. And that we used to do. Yeah, this is the cutting edge and IRFM. You know, we are celebrating Black History Month. And you hear we just talk about ancestor. And I said to you, you kill I today, you can't kill I tomorrow. I am my ancestor. My ancestor is me. I was looking for a song to try to bring across this this understanding because I know some people out there go to get confused. I say, who that talk about that him did in a slave ship and him did this? I'm kind of madman that man really. <laughs> people usually label me that way. When they can't understand what I say. People say, I'm mad boy, man. Mad man, man. I walk up a dog barefoot. They never knew, realize I'm a barefoot until me say something they don't agree with. <laughs> it's really weird. If they have a guy that agree with me, they realize if they don't wear shoes. So if you use the shoes, not wearing shoes, no, with, with the way me say, we well, not understand. And then start to complicate for in mind. Well, I want to play this song here from one of my favorite groups of all time. We had the opportunity to do all show with them. We want to play this song for make you see, say, where we are saying it's not a mad thing because you have people out there who think the same way too. You understand? Muta Baroka is not unique in his thoughts and thinking. So listen to this song, you know. It named, We Are the One. But here, We Are the One of what? Listen to this. Slavery is a system of forced labor that has existed throughout the world for thousands of years. In America, slavery began in the 17th century when people in Africa were overpowered and forced to leave their native land, their culture, and their families behind. The Europeans saw it, and others did not simply march into Africa and just take people off. I mean, there were battles, there were wars that were, were lost, you know, by the British, by the French, by the Portuguese, as well as those which were won. You had um, males and females leading forces against the enslavers. Europeans responded by coercing one tribe to enslave another, threatening to arm their enemies with terrifying new weapons if they did not cooperate. These tribal slave traders selected strong, healthy males and females between the ages of 18 and 35, although children were often captured as well. The African captives were chained together at the ankle or wrist are linked at the neck by a wooden yoke. Once bound, the captives embarked on a grueling march, sometimes as long as 600 miles to the coast where European ships awaited them. Many perished from the rigors of the trip. Others resisted their captors and were killed. The Atlantic crossing took from four to eight weeks. Men, women, and children were crowded into tightly packed quarters. The ordeal was so demoralizing that the Africans often sank into a deep depression. Some chose death rather than to endure the degradation. They attempted to escape on, on ships uh, by simply, if the opportunity offered itself, by, uh, by leaping off and uh, drowning or, or whatever. Uh, once they were bound by the uh, continental uh, United States, uh, the um, protest took the form more of insurrection. The first slaves in the American colonies, a cargo of about 20 Africans, arrived at Jamestown, Virginia in 1619. The number of enslaved Africans increased steadily each year. By 1763, the colonial population included an estimated 230,000 Africans, most of them slaves in the South. A slave was someone who could be forced to work from the age of eight, six, four even, long hours at tasks that someone else decided. A slave was a person who had no right to a vacation. A slave was a person who had no rights to wages. A slave could have no property. 
as slaves could not marry. By the late 18th century, the textile industry had entered a period of rapid development in both England and in the northern United States. This growth created a tremendous demand for southern cotton. In 1793, Eli Whitney developed the cotton gin, a machine that cleaned cotton five times faster than manual methods. As a result, more slaves were needed to pick and haul the cotton. By 1860, there would be four million African slaves in the United States. This enormous population of slaves was owned by a small group of the wealthiest and most powerful whites in American society. As African slaves toiled in the fields, laws were created to enforce their low status. They were prohibited from participating in lawsuits, from owning property or firearms, and from possessing alcohol. Most states did not recognize slave marriages and often prohibited slaves from learning to read and write. The treatment slaves received from their masters varied tremendously. Some owners were brutal, sa Some owners were brutal sadists who worked their slaves mercilessly and threatened them with corporal discipline so painful that it amounted to torture. And if you were ordered to do a task that you knew would be dangerous to you, you had to do it. So even though it's tempting to put poverty and slavery together, they were very different. And the difference is that enslaved workers had no rights. A slave had no protection from this mistreatment because the law considered a slave another man's property, not a human being. When a slave suffered a whipping, he could neither fight back nor take his master to court. Slaves developed an independent culture unknown to their masters. They spun fantastic spoken narratives that passed from one generation to the next. These folk tales express the enslaved Africans' aspirations for a better life. Many slaves found strength to endure oppression through their religion, which blended Christianity with African beliefs. Spirituality was a strong force in the life of the slave. Slaves could turn to God with all of their problems. Slaves could ask God to either relieve them of the burden of a brutal slave master or to free them from the day-to-day -day struggle in their lives. At the core of slave society was the family. Slave families suffered when one member was sold to another plantation. Owners usually kept women and children together, selling off the father and sons. On the well-established plantations, black families had a better chance of remaining intact, some enduring for three or four generations. Although religion, folk tales, and family life softened the horrors of slavery, they did not lessen the humiliating aspects of servitude. Slaves sought more direct means of resisting their bondage through violent rebellion or subtle and covert acts of resistance. You found people who were enslaved that resisted by working very slowly, pretending that they didn't know how to do something, accidentally breaking equipment, um, just, just slowing down the process, not happily go lucky going along with everything. These were all forms of resistance. Wherever there were Africans in the Western Hemisphere, there were slave revolts. Haiti's Toussaint Louverture helped rid the island of European domination by organizing his people into a standing army of several thousand troops. The best-known slave revolt in U.S. history occurred in 1831 in Southampton, Virginia. It was led by a plantation headman named Nat Turner, who rose up in revolt with other slaves and killed the plantation owner and his family. The rampage was halted when local militia crushed the rebellion, 
capturing and executing Turner. Many men and women known as abolitionists worked unceasingly to end slavery. They viewed slavery as immoral and unchristian and could not comprehend how Americans steeped in the tenets of the Declaration of Independence could sanction the enslavement of human beings. Many former slaves like Sojourner Truth supported the abolitionist movement. She traveled widely speaking for both racial and gender causes. Sojourner Truth, using her very strong religious beliefs, uh, felt this need, this urge to travel the country, uh, delivering her message of, um, of upliftment uh, for black people, and ultimately did become someone who was involved in many other activities, including the abolitionist movement, including the women's movement. The abolitionist movement attracted members of both races, including the prominent journalist William Lloyd Garrison, who published The Liberator the leading anti-slavery newspaper of the day. Frederick Douglass, another towering figure in the anti-slavery movement, was born a Maryland slave in about 1817. Escaping to the North, he became an agent of the Massachusetts Anti-Slavery Society and a tireless orator for black freedom. In 1847, Douglass founded an abolitionist newspaper, the North Star. He was politically active uh, and simply involved in every aspect uh, of life that he could uh, in an attempt to improve the status of, of black Americans in the 19th century. There's certainly individuals in the 20th century, uh, such as Martin Luther King, who had a similar impact as Frederick Douglass did in his time. Uh, so I would say to a high school student that uh, who is more likely to know of Martin Luther King uh, in our modern time, that he should be aware of Frederick Douglass as the equivalent of a Martin Luther King uh, in the uh, 19th century. On plantation, that he should be aware of Frederick Douglass as the equivalent of a Martin Luther King uh, in the uh, 19th century. On plantations, Slaves performed numerous jobs and were placed in hierarchical ranks. Field slaves were usually divided into gangs of five to ten and supervised by a slave driver, often a slave himself. Many slaves escaped to freedom along a series of trails known as the Underground Railroad. The railroad was a loose network of people willing to hide runaway slaves in their homes and conduct them to the next station or safe house until they could reach the free north. The Underground Railroad was also aided by northern abolitionist organizations such as the Philadelphia Vigilance Committee who gave supplies and helped conduct slaves to freedom. The Philadelphia Vi Vigilance Committee was a very important group engaged in aiding fugitive slaves. It was a group that had operated from the late 1830s um, into the early 1840s, and it was comprised of fugitives as well as free blacks and white supporters. It was a group that aided the Underground Railroad, and their primary um, um, job was to aid fugitives with food and clothing and, and money and to direct them on to other places. Pursued by angry slave masters and bounty hunters, the route for escaped slaves was perilous and hard. Many did not survive the hardship or were caught and returned to their masters. The most famous guide on the Underground Railroad was Harriet Tubman. Having escaped from a Maryland plantation in 1849, she became familiar with the roads, hiding places, and depots that were used to conduct runaways to freedom in the North. Harriet Tubman was a brave, courageous, wise, and kind person. Not only did she concerned herself about her liberty, but she concerned herself about people of all races. As you know, one reason why the Underground Railroad is so popular among people throughout the world is that people of all races, creeds, and colors came together. 
Tubman's method relied on secrecy and surprise. She would gather money and supplies in the north, then slip down to the eastern shore through Delaware and into Maryland, arriving unannounced until the last moment. She would make contact with the slaves who were ready to escape. She would simply appear in uh, on the eastern shore, and the word would be quickly spread uh, to all of those who were determined that they would be free, where they should meet her at the appointed hour. And, of course, those who chose freedom met her there and embarked with her on the trek to freedom. After she learned from her first venture that she could not, t- she could not um, trust slaves to determine that they were going to drop out, she packed a revolver, and for those who determined that they were going to turn around, she told them, go forward or die. To avoid suspicion, Tubman sang traditional slave spirituals to relay coded messages to slaves. She stole away into the night and crept along the very slave quarters or cabins oftentimes whispering or knocking our doors, more or less singing, uh, steal away, steal away, steal away to Jesus. I ain't got long to stay here, was a coded spiritual, informing the slaves to steal away. Having gathered her flock, Tubman would travel at night and conduct them to Delaware or Pennsylvania. She used only the most trusted contacts and safe houses along the route of the Underground Railroad. One such key station on the Underground Railroad was Johnson House in Germantown, Pennsylvania. Owned by Quakers, Johnson House was a safe haven for exhausted runaway slaves. In 1850, the Fugitive Slave Act intensified the risk for runaway slaves. Under federal law, any Negro accused of being a runaway could be returned to slavery by the sworn statement of the slave's owner. Northern states that had been safe for fugitive slaves became dangerous as runaway slaves were hunted for reward. To be safe, Tubman extended her underground railroad trail to St. Catharines, Canada, a town near Niagara Falls. Walk together, children. Walk together, children. Don't become weary. We're going to make it to the promised land. I have shoes. You have shoes. All God's children have shoes. When you get to heaven, going to put on their shoes and walk all over God's heaven. Heaven was a code word for Canada. During her trips to the south, Harriet Tubman became known as the Moses of her people, referring to the biblical Moses who delivered his people from Egyptian bondage. She successfully conducted over 600 slaves to freedom, including her own family. And freedom is a word that has tremendous resonance, particularly for black Americans, but also for Americans in general, because slavery stands right behind it, and we know so much about what slavery meant. Slavery was a terrible condition that no one wanted to embrace or to be part of. So freedom is glorious because it's the denial, it's, it's the triumph over slavery. In 1857, the growing abolitionist movement suffered a setback when the United States Supreme Court handed down a controversial decision in the case of Dred Scott versus Sanford. Dred Scott, a black slave, brought suit against his owner on the grounds that he had legally become emancipated while traveling through the free soil state of Illinois. The Supreme Court ruled against Scott, declaring that as a black man he was not a United States citizen and thus had no right to bring a suit in a federal court. More importantly, the court ruled that a slave did not automatically gain his liberty by entering a free state. The legal system was available to African Americans to a certain extent, um, which means that they could pursue their grievances through the courts, but it did not mean necessarily that the courts would be sympathetic to their interests 
or that fairness would be the issue. Two years after the Dred Scott case, an abolitionist named John Brown organized a plot to free southern slaves through armed intervention. In order to secure sufficient weaponry, he led a raiding party of 13 whites and five blacks into the federal arsenal at Harpers Ferry, Virginia. John Brown contacted Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass and involved them in his Harpers Ferry plan to attack the slave-owning South and to liberate the slaves. Harriet Tubman um, was committed to join Brown. Um, Frederick Douglass, however, studied the plan and determined that it would fail and decided that he would not be a part. Harriet Tubman um, would have been with John Brown at Harper's Ferry had she not become ill at the time courts would be sympathetic to their interests or that fairness would be the issue. Two years after the Dred Scott case, an abolitionist named John Brown organized a plot to free southern slaves through armed intervention. In order to secure sufficient weaponry, he led a raiding party of 13 whites and five blacks into the federal arsenal at Harpers Ferry, Virginia. John Brown contacted Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass and involved them in his Harpers Ferry plan to attack the slave-owning South and to liberate the slaves. Harriet Tubman um, was committed to join Brown. Um, Frederick Douglass, however, studied the plan and determined that it would fail and decided that he would not be a part. Harriet Tubman um, would have been with John Brown at Harpers Ferry had she not become ill at the time. Brown wrested control of the armory, killed the town's mayor, and seized several hostages before he was captured by federal authorities and hanged two months later. In 1860, Abraham Lincoln was elected the 16th president of the United States. He opposed the expansion of slavery and his victory threw the South into revolt. By March of 1861, seven states... Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Texas had seceded from the Union to form a coalition they called the Confederate States of America. The Civil War began one month later when Confederate gunfire sounded over the federal stronghold of Fort Sumter in South Carolina. Lincoln responded by issuing a call for 75,000 volunteers to man the Union Army. Some historians argue that economic issues were of utmost importance in the causing of the war. Many historians, though, have come to the conclusion in recent years that slavery was the key issue which caused the Civil War. At the heart of the Civil War was the issue of whether or not the slave states were going to be able to maintain their status. The abolitionists presented the president with two demands, the right of freed blacks to fight with the Union Army and the emancipation of the slaves. The abolitionists were the men and women, um, black and white, that wanted to abolish or to end slavery. Um, many of the abolitionists were in the North, and they fought for many years to, to change the system that the country had accepted. I'd like to add also that for women abolitionists, speaking in public was tremendously courageous. That the early 19th century was a time in which women did not generally speak in public. It was not considered the thing to do for respectable women. Eventually, Lincoln acceded to both demands. Nearly 185,000 blacks fought valiantly during the Civil War, and about 38,000 of them 
gave their lives to the Union's cause. In December 1862, Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, abolishing slavery. The war's end in April 1865 brought freedom to nearly four million slaves. Freedmen, as both males and females were called, celebrated throughout the South on plantations or at crossroads between them. By word of mouth, uh, news of the Emancipation Proclamation spread, I believe, like wildfire throughout the Confederacy. Uh, the, the ability of... Uh, African Americans to transmit messages uh, before the Civil War, during the Civil War, is legendary, and this was another example of that legendary ability to uh, communicate. In December 1865, Congress passed the 13th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, guaranteeing the hard won freedom of African slaves. It stated, Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall exist within the United States. Emancipation throughout the South was followed by a period of intense confusion in which blacks made the dramatic transition from slavery to citizenship. At first, a number of slaves decided to walk about, as the expression was in that time, to test freedom, to see what it really meant. But they soon discovered that life meant more than just having simple freedom without economic support. And so many were forced to go back to the old plantations and to contract with their owners for work. In 1867, uh, Congress fed up with the pussyfooting of the president, who was then Andrew Johnson, a slaveholder from Tennessee, and a man who had been Lincoln's vice president and who ascended to the office with the assassination of uh, President Lincoln passed the first Reconstruction Act in March of uh, that year. And that uh, placed the 10 of the 11 states of the Confederacy, the fighting South, under military rule in five districts and annulled the governments of those states. This reconstruction ushered in an era of reform, but did not alter the economic disparity between the former slaves and their masters. The South complied with the dictates of reconstruction only because the military now occupied their territory, enforcing the new laws. As part of this revolutionary pattern in the South, Congress extended the right to vote to all free men, thus granting formerly unheard of power to the blacks. This new block of black voters, without a corresponding economic foundation, only increased the ability of the Republican Party to maintain temporary control of the re-United States. After the Reconstruction, um, government failed and the northern soldiers were pulled out of the South. Violence increased in the South. Um, the groups like the Ku Klux Klan were attempting to take away the rights that had been gained by African Americans. One of the things that I think uh, young people today should be aware of is the range of extremely important contributions that African Americans have made uh, to American society over the years and that they've been able to make these contributions in the face of uh, overwhelming odds. Uh, they have fought for rights which had been denied them uh, and which we now have available to us and which quite often, uh, quite frequently, uh, we abuse. We don't take full advantage of. The Civil War destroyed the institution of slavery but it did not end the racism of white Southerners who wanted their former slaves to retain their inferior status. Discrimination against Americans of African descent would continue. Like Tubman and Douglas before them, new leaders would be called forward by African Americans to guide their fight for freedom. Yeah. <coughs> yes. And repeat it again, we are the ones we've been waiting for. Very interesting here about Ariad Tubman, you know. There's a famous quote from Ariad Tubman that she says, 
I freed hundreds of slaves. And I could have freed more if only they knew they were slaves. Serious quote that. I freed a lot of slaves. But I could have freed more if only they knew they were slaves. That quote is from Harriet Tubman. And if you listen to that documentary there, you realize that there's a parallel that took place in Jamaica. It's the same thing. Because how she fight it. And I was just talking about how the slaves use the church to free themselves from slavery and to plan rebellion against the slave master. There is no church in Jamaica that is doing that. Because the church in Jamaica is complacent and it's part of the same system that oppresses the people. In those days, the slave use the church. You hear me, you know, you know, you know, and steal away, steal away home to Jesus. One hearing that song would believe that the people them get converted to Christianity, but them using what them have at them disposal to free themselves from bondage. So when the others hear steal away home to Jesus, you know, say, I don't know Jesus, I don't know heaven, they might talk about, or Canada, they might talk about. So, we know that in, in Jamaica, that was also used. That was also used by a lot of people who claimed slavery, who said they were slaves, including Paul Bogle. Who Paul Bogle, them say was a deacon in the church, and him, and a, and a, what I'm call a, a brown skin, um, Jamaican, um, a brother named William, William Garden. I'll forget all him. I'll forget all him. I'll forget all him. Stop believing me. William Garden. Because William Garden, William Garden died because of association, not because of nothing we do. I want, we will know that and get that straight in our head. That William Garden was not fighting for no Paul Bogle. William Garden get killed because of association. He was hung because of association. I don't know how he become national hero. You have a, you have a man named Mr. Sherlock who wrote and a, them, them have them taped up a university, you know. Them have them taped up a university, you know, when Sherlock can talk about what did, what did William God do to become national hero? What did William God do to become national hero more than he was associated with a rebel? Them say, show me a company and I will tell you who you are. And the only reason, the only reason why William Garden was hanged was because he was associating with Paul Bogle. It wasn't because he was planning anything against white people. I was part of no revolution or nothing. But he was also a, a, a Christian-minded person. And Paul Bogle used that idea. Because this is how the only place that black people was allowed to speak freely was in the church. It's like how sometimes they would, they would have preferred lower Rasta man in a church than in a school. A Rasta youth would be more acceptable in, in a church than in school because the church did have to indoctrinate you to the point of losing yourself. Well, slaves wasn't so fool. Our ancestors wasn't fool fool like we one of the one believe. We use the church. We use the church. Go to church, dress up in them tight shoes. Put on the cap. Yes, Massa. Yes, Massa. And preach the gospel. Read the Bible. And become nice, decent slaves. But the underlying thing was to get rid of this chain from round your neck and round your foot. And many slaves use that. And if you study American gospel music 
and listen to gospel music, you will recognize and you will be told that a lot of these so-called American spiritual, black spiritual music has nothing to do with the philosophy of Christianity. Nothing. It has nothing to do with the concept of Christianity. It has something to do with liberation and how you're going to use coded messages to liberate yourself from these colonial slave masters. So we have to recognize that also in our ancestors. We are the ones we were waiting on. Are we? Yes, Mr. Baruch, the most honorable. Yes, sir. Blessed man. Oh, you do, sir? Are they uh, on the cutting edge? Well, I may I take you to show the show at night, you know? Mm. Uh, you show, your show keep me alive, man. Ah, that's beautiful, man. Yeah, man. And open the eyes of the black people. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I want to say to you, have you ever learned about a, a black man named Isaac Edmund Stone Barnes? No. All right. He's from... We were born in Hyoban Street in Kingston. Okay. From... One of the slave, one of the slave girl. Mm. Uh, let us start again. Uh, there were two, two brothers named Barnes. One named uh, Charles Barnes. Mm -hmm. uh, they sent from Scotland, Ember. Mm -hmm. uh, come and work and come run the plantation and name St. Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Down where all parties. So, the, the, Spread the family in Stephen Run, 50 yard um, Barnes, Barnes baby, born in a one little mud hut. And they spread the the family. So, hello? Yeah, ma'am, I listen, I listen, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, so, so, in the, in the late 17th, 18th century, uh, just about 18, about in the 1850-something, uh, 1840, uh, the plantation run down. So one of the brothers, I don't remember his name now, but William Barnes, no, the other brother went to Kingston and by out Hyoban Street and built a lot of build, building up there mm -hmm. and established a church somewhere of 154 Aaron Street. Mm -hmm. And then um, that's the time he get Isaac William. Uh, Ed, that's why, that, that's the time he get, uh, Isaac Edney Stone Barnes. Okay. And he went to Calabar High School. Maybe it was in Trelawney and uh, thereabout. And then after he leave, when he was, when he was going to, when he, when he was going to Calabar, the white guys, they were two time in a, Religion and all them sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And clergy, and he denounced them. Instead of they, they preach, uh, he said they, they preach love and humanity to their fellow men, they preach in hate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he leave, after he leave college, he went to, to university. The first university, we are Jamaica College now. Then downgraded from the university but to Jamaica slave, College. But was, uh, he was not slave, man. Ah, uh, no. No, he was not slave because he had to Calabar School and University and all them something there. Yeah, but uh, Isaac, Isaac and Mr. Stone Barnes went, went to, the, to the college. Yeah. To the first university, from the college, Calabar, to the, to the university. Yeah. yeah. And the first university was established with one of the bands from St. Elizabeth, the okay. same ancestor. Okay, okay, okay. Right, mm -hmm. fine. And he do a course in, in civil engineering. Mm -hmm. Right, it's a long story, one of the richest No, but that we are really well on it. So why you tell me the story about this specific person? Yeah, because the writer said that he was the greatest actor on the face of the Earth planet. He was, was the 100 the years word. above. The greatest what? He was 100 years above with knowledge ooh, on the Earth ooh. planet of uh, Isaac Edmund Stone Barnes. Was 100 years above? Year above 
That's what the writer said. Which writer? Which writer? That the university writer is him. Where the writer name? What say that? Where the writer name? What say that? I don't remember because I don't have the book in front of me, but I want to make contact with you and take the books. And you have other books we can take. No, no, no. Book. Wait, we're not out the other books now. Which book this story that you are telling me about in now? Ah, uh, it, it marked color, color blind in a white man world. Okay, okay. Color blind yeah. in a white man world. Yes, in yes. In that book, it tell you about this Jamaican. Yes. Where he does a talk about who used to go Calabar. Right, sir. And then it them say him is the, him, what is it, them, is, them say him is what? The greatest atar the earth planet have ever seen. He was 100 years above everybody with knowledge. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He yeah, could look yeah. on the style and tell you that gold is there. Okay. Diamond is there. Isle is there. And all of that. And then... And when he was 21 year old, he come back to Nain uh, uh, and, and required the estate in his name and name alone and started to plant banana, planting and other fruits. Okay. And, yeah, and started to export. Uh, At that particular time, it was eight, 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 yeah, eight, uh, eight, eight export. Give me the name of the person. Give me the name of the person again. Isaac. Right. Ed, Edmund Stone Barnes. Edmund Stone? Yeah, Ed, Edmund Stone. Edmund Stone Barnes. Spell, spell that. Spell it. E-S-M-E. E-S-M-E. M-E. Yeah. Esme. S-T-O-N-E-B-A-R-N-E-S. All right. Edmund Stone Barnes. All right. I'm going to look him up. Right, right. All right, give thanks, Virgin. Give thanks. Y yes, man. And you can't tell And what we should do is organize the, the island, you know, and take it over, you know, and run it ourselves because okay. black people is still under slaves. Yeah, but who you going to rule? Where you, who you going to take over? Where you take it over from? Who you take it over from? Take it over from, from the papi show them up them and the church people them and the old politician them and the yeah. bank and the lawyer them and the doctor them and things like we are mash up the place, man. All right, sir. All right. right? You have, to, you have to have some plan, though, you know. You have to have a plan. You know, just take over nothing. Uh, you, know. you have to have a plan. You understand? Yes, yes, yes. All right, give thanks. Cutting edge. Greetings, Muta. Blessed. Blessed. How is that? Why are they cutting cut the edge? You, you, you up them over, your man? What do you mean? Your man, you're you sick. In the program. Oh, we think I sick. Something wrong with your belly hurt your ass, so you can't sleep. I don't understand you at all. <laughs> <laughs> Your man must have gone good. All right, sir. Give time to you, sir. Give time to you, sir. Yeah, man. The night school. Okay. All right. Yeah, man. Um, I wanted just to block a sound mm -hmm. about three scale ash, the St. Lucian herbal doctor, mm. who tried in at the end of the week. He's going to be here for a week, and during that time, there's a book launch that we're arranging for him on campus. Okay. But there's also a desire on his part to work with Rastafari, who need that kind of attention. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, he is someone who is fairly... Um, knowledgeable on preparation of medicine. Medicine, okay. So him have, you know, things in bottles that are well labeled and for a range of Very important, things. well labeled. Yeah man, well labeled, approved um, by the St. Lucian authorities. He travels extensively with these products um, and sells them and, you know, it's in high demand. But he, he comes and he has been here before, um, but this time I think he wants to, you know, reach a little more people and share um, some of his lectures. He has a very good lecture on nutrition and the way it, you know, con contorts the human frame right. based on what you're eating and, you know, showing a range of genetically modified um, mm -hmm. foods and that kind of thing. The details of his um, week's activity will come forward, um, you know, towards the end of this week by email and Facebook and, okay. and, and all of that. So we have to look out for that. Yeah, man, I just want pray to... That, want pray to that we email no crash by within that time, as we will not know anything well, about well, it. Well, the man arrives on Adwa, but I still think um, 
all things will be standing beyond right. that point, you know. Okay, sir. First of all, it is when right. he actually Come. begins to do what him, him come here to do. All right. So we'll look out for the more information about that then. Yeah, man. But the man, the man are going good. him let off a good um, reparations conversation, I see. The, 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 the doctor? Yeah. Huh? The doctor. I didn't hear that. You said the doctor had talked about reparation? I, I, I may have talked, you know. Oh, you know, I, 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 I switch the subject. Where are you talking about now? Yeah, man, me move from pre-scale last now. Me oh, me never know, you me never know you move from me. Me start talking about reparation, and me say, you, you said the man are going good. I, the man are going good is, is, is the I of me I talk, you know. Move okay, 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 all right, sir. Oh, you and mean put you into the talk, you know, the park? Well... The talk in general in the park, but, um, you know, particularly, I think, the conversation about land. And I heard you earlier on the program talking about accountability of individuals, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the work of Professor Vereen Shepherd as, you know, one person who is not just trying to make slavery seem like a fierce thing. Yeah, fear, yeah but, putting but, some name to it. I, I, but I, I don't know if you remember the question that the Bridgen asked you. Uh, our sister in rather, the sister in, one of the sister in young daughter who got up and asked the question, asked the question about how are we going to set the record right when they are descendants of those who oppressed us, present still benefiting yes. from property and yes, related yes, um, yes, yes. colonial empire. And, you know, uh, the, the conversation, I think that you started about land. You know, there's land which is in private holding. Mm -hmm. M much of the best land is in the hands of a very few farmers who have been farming, white farmers who have been farming from them times yeah. until now. You know, large estates. And then there's a large amount of land which is considered... Crown land. Crown land. Crown land. Crown yeah. land, you know. And, I mean, when when you started out the program earlier and you played the Peter Tosh mm -hmm. um, um, lecture during the concert... Yes, yes. yes. Where in, in, yeah. If, so we come, see, come and take with the sun. <laughs> yeah, if, if we seriously thought about this, you mm -hmm. know... Um, Sugar from before slavery ended was understood to be a waste of the 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 the, the capitalistic um, yes, yes. Um, common sense behind it. It was unprofitable. Yes. The way it was produced was was completely um, uh, it, 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 unsustainable. Yes. You know? And and with all of that said, the best lands in the country are still underutilized. And the sugar yes. as the monoculture. Yes. Now that is not just connected to the way land is used, but it's the way people are governed. Because what it does is it allows for the existing institutional structures to have seasonal labor, which is under its control. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you work sugar, um, and then there is a rest period. And then you go and have a sugar, and then there's a lot of rum drinking and niceness until yeah. the next time. Yeah. And in between that, there's farm work, you know. Um, mm. So, so th that is a basic institution that really needs to be critically uh, engaged yeah, in order course. for for any kinds of reparations to to begin to to make sense. You know, I mean, that that, that is something that emancipation don't buck yet. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and we understand that emancipation is a, is a process, but, yeah, so I, what I'm saying is I completely agreed with the conversation that you began yes, yeah, about, yeah, yeah. about land, you know, and, yeah. and, and we're avoiding it. Jamaican land is, it, the average person will not be able to, in their lifetime, buy a piece, buy of, a land piece of land anywhere in the, yeah. in, in the city. I wish you not buy because there's unequal distribution of land. It's not that there's not enough land for the three million people. It's just, a unequal distribution of that land space. See, and and you know when you think about it, you know if if you have the the I, the, the, the first conversation about reparations in the post-slavery um, era that really took hold is the idea of this forty acres and a mule that the slaves the should have been entitled yes, to. Yes, yes, and 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 that is a principle, right? That 
if commonly applied, what you're really saying is that I've given this man not only the, the means, land resources, uh, yes. but the the mechanism yes. to turn this land over. To, yes. You yes. know, I mean, he just needs to put a plow up on that now and, and go on. Yeah, through, there's no know. reason why he just let go a man and tell him to go and go fend for himself and him, where am I going to fend for your land? That means I'm going to charge him for trespassing. I'm going to go rob you and kill you and take away where you have. It's two things. It's either you're going to charge him for trespassing and shoot me, or me, I'm going to kill you See. and take away your food because I'm not going to have no food. So basically, it's set up in a way that really... Or me, I'm going to kill you See. and take away your food because I'm not going to have no food. So basically, it's set up in a way that really there is, there is no real emancipation that occurs. No, definitely not. You know, definitely um, not. And, 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 and that is... That is a part, I mean, the, the, the reparations conversation, um, which is legal and historical, there is now a, a social dialogue, mm. which is an important part of that, which is, you know, to make sense of these systems and institutions. And that, that's what Rastafari has consistently done, which is why we even reached this point. Yeah, but what, 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 how are you, if, if you follow the reasoning on the program a while ago, when we are talking about this, is the same people them are bringing in a slavery? Mm. Is the same people them now control the IMF? And we must not feel like it's not we the dependency them. That is part of my trying to narrow the gap between these people who say them no responsible feet and we who are say we is just descendants from these people. But, but, but Muta, the yes. slave ship is now in New Kingston. Yes. As the, the embassy that we, we now line up and pay visa fees to go into. Yes. And, yes. and one in ten who actually get through and, 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 and actually get the visa, there's another nine that them tell, come back. Come back, yes. Which is the next $140. Yes. So the, 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 you're right. The, the, the system hasn't changed. In fact, it is so... It's so sophisticated now yes. that you pay for your slave ship voyage. Of course. And we have some people who enslave, who is institutionalizing the thing that we now declare that is oppressing we. We have some slaves, some boss slaves, who are, who are put it into, perp, into action. Thin, you know, thin, where thin. we call them government and preachers. Thin, where thin. these people now is not looking like the people them in our Britain. Looking like the slaves, them dressing like the people, them in Britain, and we have them at our trust. Well, the the, the the point is that people take for granted Western civilization as civilization, mm. and 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 in order for you, I mean, and it's all it's global now. I mean, and it's, this is the way that Rastafari is 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 original in thought because. We are probably the only people within the global space that are not trying to be Western. Yes. In in a political and 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 cultural, and cultural sense. sense. Yeah. And and so the, the best and most advanced among us, if them really don't start to interrogate them identity mm. within the the space of Western dominance. Yes. And 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 to position themselves in a critical way against that, then them, them is a part of the oppression, you know. Um, I, 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 another classic example is I, I meet a Rastafari youth, um, a brethren putting on him locks, and he must shave up him, him, him face side. So I mm. said to him, you know, that's a part of the fullness, you know. He said, you know, no, you know, sometimes you need a work and you have to mm. look a certain way. But I said, but, but, but we are suggesting that looking the way we look naturally yes. is unacceptable. Yes. And the more you transform that, that look, look yes. to, to, to tell them that you also think say, that look is problematic, yes. then it's, it's the more you, 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 you ponder to that. You yeah. know? Um, and so may I say, in, in a way, it is so rooted in what people think is business convention. Yes. You in know, relationship to, to the European domination of the see, concept. The, that living in the illusion of the European domination, we feel, say, to be accepted business-wise, this is what we have to do. See, 
in, in my mind, the, the, the reparations conversation, in, in, in fact, I hear you talking about it in various different ways, like um, last Thursday. The, 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 the levels of transformation of thinking in, if you think about it, the, recently there's a big newscast about um, cancer and the amount of people who are likely to get to cancer in a couple cancer. of years, yeah. And then they go on in the same report to say so that developing countries developing countries are most at risk and then they talk about the risk of sugar and yes, and, and must be, I can't remember the other thing that they mentioned. Yeah, yeah. But 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 is is everything alcohol, sugar and alcohol I'm saying. Sugar and alcohol were Which is that what, what this was the reason for slavery too. <laughs> Can you imagine that now? No, <laughs> the same people them who in slavery are telling me say one of the main causes that going to kill people in the future is cancer, and we must cut down on our sugar and alcohol. And and the, the problem is now that we, as the source of these things, yes, are well addicted to uh, sugar and alcohol. Our, our thing of a sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah. Sweet, so why you know? people now move away from the sugar and alcohol, and See, we yeah. know it's planting it. To maintain an internal slavery to the team. You know, Muta, you, you, you touch on it now, you know, because coming in from Africa, those are two of the serious problems that they are encountering. Cigarettes are dirt cheap. Yes. You can get a 20 pack of cigarettes for yeah, 100 man. Jamaican yeah, dollars. Yes. Almost everywhere. Everywhere you go, cigarettes are very cheap. cheap. So yeah. there's, a, there's a big youth um, interest in, in this Western habit of smoking yes. in that way, yes. right? But the alcohol is quick, quick, quick. I mean, South Africa, bad, oh, yeah, bad, man. bad. There's a lot of youth interest in alcohol and consumption, even, you know, turban-wearing youth. Yeah, but if you ask to, you have to you have to go to South Africa, right, that's all. Well, well, you know it go. Yeah. But the point I'm making is that without any sort of um, reservation, yes. <laughs> you know, yes. um, and and so so in in a sense, the the poisons that they have nicely constructed are well embedded now in the developing world. Yes. This is what the report and ends. And the psyche of the people them seen, who is seen, seen as slaves. We have enough work for do. Yeah, man, give thanks, brethren. Give Let thanks. Me. Yes, serious thing. Slavery was about sugar and rum. Now, we see that the consumption of sugar and rum, which these studies is showing you, that cancer will be increased in developing countries in the next so much years. Cancer will be increased. And they are asking us to cut down on our intake of sugar and rum. Meanwhile, back a yard, we are looking Chinese them for, for plant more cane to make more sugar. That them can now take the dark sugar and go bleach it out and sell we back for twice the amount of money where it costs for produce it. Can you imagine that? We produce dark sugar. We ship it to our foreign. Them do what they want to do with it and call it granulated sugar and send it back to a white like snow, like cocaine. Which it no make no difference between it and cocaine, there's no difference. Oh, yeah. Cut it. Congo. Bless it. Ah, yeah, 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 your man. <laughs> yes. She for who? Them te you see them showing it? <clears throat> them showing it is not pleasant to listen. Yes. But it's a reality. Of course. And we are the black survivors, you know? Of course. Of we just course. give thanks to be here because yeah. what we're being through is unimaginable, you know? Yes. yes. But give thanks. I give thanks. Um, give thanks to the boxes from the beginning. Yes. Peter, yes. that's Peter. Yeah, if, it's, if it is possible, you can play that again. Oh! Which one you are you? Peter, what is. Okay, alright, sir. If Let's it is say. possible, give us some more. And let us confirm that, um, Sila. S spell S E L A H from from Steel Pulse is really on that tribute to the Martyrs album. But me have the tribute to the Martyrs album. I'm not but it is the year. I don't right, know how they right. are not seen it. All but right, anyhow, sir. Um, right, me will get it. Me will get it. Just yeah, man, because of you, me will look at it. We, yes. we, we love to make. Uh, even in this program, you're right in the midst of black black story, man. We love to make our simple 
um, spoken word, smitten spoken word contribution. And it goes like this. Not pleasant just like ship ahoy. But it's the truth. Black like tar. In between a brown as chocolate bar. Still not shining as a star. Ah. The reason is near, not far. You don't know who you are. If thanks are your Congo. Ah, that one was short and spicy. <laughs> Black and creamy. Ah, I did not expect more. <laughs> I did not expect aye. more. It gets me half yard. So. Yeah, man, give thanks, man. Give thanks. Give thanks to truth. Black like a tar. Yeah, man. Black up, black. There, you know? Yeah, man. First strong. The poetry vibes there. When touching. Yeah, there you play some poetry there. Last poet and thing. Oh, last week. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, man. I do love if the eye touch more poetry on the program there. May I tell the eye. Because we don't hear poetry on radio anymore. Okay. So the vibration there was very touching, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Definitely. So with that love if all, even one shot. Month, the I have touched some poetry better and I continuously and vibrate some original poetry in the hearing, you know? Right, yeah, man, cause, uh, some original Muta Baruka poetry, we not hear them. Yeah. From, uh, for the old time vibration, them there. Yeah, the place. yeah man, cause, nigger, negro, West Indian, Indian, I know you hear them poetry the pan radio rasta. I love if they are vibrate them poetry there, you know? Alright, alright, give thanks, man. Yeah, man. Touching pan the land situation, oh, things are go. I think the coral garden is a very important issue right now. We're burning at this Iowa, you know? What aspect of the Coral Garden incident, Coral Garden thing you talk about? What you, don't, you don't know, say, you have an issue which part the public defender when talk say 2013, that case supposed to be brought before the hearing, whether by parliament some form of forward and to so go on right now and in the year, Pinacla, everything I notice, everything just keeps silent. Mm. Now nah, you're not the touch pertaining to the reparation aspect of the Coral Garden incident, you know? So, with, with the Coral Garden, um, what do you call it? Administrators, them. Not them, you're supposed to direct that to man. Well, the Coral Garden committee, you know, some so-called business them are dealing with right now, you know, because when we look upon the whole situation, now we go on, the coming like, man, Coral Garden committee is wanted to come on and rate an event. And deal with some collection business. Cause right now, certain justice not even administrate right amongst the ancient them. And we say, I and I make certain moves towards getting things dealt with and all these committee and people where they say, them are administrate towards Rastafari. No care why you bring forth to them, them not deal with the issue the real way. So right now, we are called for a certain one like the item now and concern Rastafari citizen. We need an independent auditor to audit them thing yeah. So yeah, right now, on, just hold like on, hold one. Hold on, hold on. you say you call up on me and want them to do it? Forget auditor. What oh, you mean, because if then things why you call up on me? Why you don't go to go find an auditor to uh, get the thing audited? Why you call you up see, on me? You see, you see, true. The item is one we agitate strongly around certain issues when it comes to the Black Liberation Front, like all uh, them things. Uh. The item vice is very significant and important. No, but you don't so, need no vice so, to get an auditor. You, uh, you, you see, to you, a, a, a auditor, you see, you get an auditor. You don't need no vice to get an auditor. You look a free auditor. Oh, you mean we are look free auditor, yes? Oh, when we are yeah, say auditor, yeah, yeah, we are talk like concerned citizens' voice yeah, well, within the administration no, of Oland. Rasta have too much problem. Huh? Rasta have too much problem, Rasta. Because every day is... How is it problem, Rasta, yes? Yeah, so when I say no, you want to investigate some Rasta. And you are calling up, call up on people now 
who is mm. hard to go investigate Rasta. Because yes. you know, I've not trust in the ones them who is set there to do things. You are called up on people now to go investigate Rasta. As concerned, concerned citizens of no, Rasta, no, no, right? Uh, no you see, them no two thousand, man. Them no two, hold on, two thousand. Yeah, the only argument you know about Rasta this and Rasta that you know. I tell the truth, you know, because we have so many yeah. different things that go on. You know, you have, you have, you have cast aspersion for a group of Rasta, and then now you are telling me you now so we must go get at it. I forgot at it, Rasta. I know you will go get it. Yeah, but that you just have to say me who have influence <laughs> for go find some no, people. No, listen. Concerned citizens of Rastafari is now calling upon one like the I know. Who is the as one who who agitate. Who is the concerned citizen of Rastafari? I can't do it. Who is the concerned citizens? Why? Explain to me who is the concerned citizens of Carlo Pan Muta Baruka? Who is the concerned citizens? Where them come from? I personally are one of them, no, and so most of them know. come from Mobile. Are you, are you one of them? Are you one of them? No, no, no. All right. Well, what I and I want to ask concern, Rasta, I want to advise you to speak right no, now as one of the, the concerned no, Rasta I, far right. I, with, you are the everyone concern, can man. talk one time, so I want advice I go utter right now. Are you are the like concerned. No, well, I want advice and my advice I go utter. Yeah, you are the concerned citizens who don't, don't trust the ones them who call them the, 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 the Coral Gardens Committee. So if you, you don't like one, the Coral Gardens one, Committee now, you come on the radio now to discredit one these ones to come tell them, say, them need audit. And you forget get the audit because you have concern. I know I'm not concerned about them. You have concern about them. You go get an auditor. You are the ones them who do go get auditor. 2013. I was one of the front line bridging them. They even pushed the vibration to towards a, a, a public event a march out there. Yeah, and you know why? Well, no, I know the well, well, no, well, well, no, But me well, no, 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 because all you want to know is try cast can aspirations for other Rasta. That's all you do. So, so I want to ask the I know. The I know. See, it's important. I'm gonna find auditors to go audit the Rasta them who you who, who you not trust. So, I trust them. I I trust them. I have nothing against them. You have some against them. You go find auditors to go audit them. Or we don't so want the, them to stand for. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know I'm not concerned pertaining no, to no, the no. elder. Hold on, hold on, you're not concerned. Hold on, no, I'm not concerned about nothing where you're saying. Hold on, no. I have that concern with nothing. No. I am not concerned with nothing that you're saying. You are fighting yeah. a group of Rasta who you don't trust, and you want me for get involved in it. I say, you go find an auditor for audit the Rasta them who you don't trust. Don't come break me night. Don't put All me right, me hear, All right, me hear that. Yeah, so we don't do conversation now. The, the I, we are dealing with a different topic and levels of the, of the thing now. The I don't concern about I and I getting reparation and brought the incident towards the court. They never hear with us a type of reparation. You never hear me on the bridge before a type of reparation. Yes, yeah, so yeah. what about the Carol Gardner incident that There's brought nothing. into court from the public defender point of view? Let's say, Let's in 2013, this thing would have brought before the court. Why the I vice is not agitating I towards did. that? I did. Yeah. Don't come question my why I'm not doing that and why I'm not doing that. Don't question me about that. You not in no authority to come question me about that. I am saying yeah, to you, not, you so are then the it's one. Not part, then it's not a part of me. reparation where the I You is the one who is aggressively against a group of Rasta. Because not against, not against. Not again. So here we are going to know. You see the auditor where you want to audit them? And I call um, upon me for getting involved in it. Nah. I do have no problem with the people them who you are added. So you were well, you know. She from the auditing you, now. No, I'm not shifting. You go to the you go down to Montego Bay tomorrow morning and um, find a company who um, is sympathetic to your cause for um, adding them Rasta day. And the I yeah. I don't shift get involved. I, I don't not, I don't involve in it. I don't go and get involved in it. All right, I hear you. Yeah. So the eye is not interested in the don't reparation. Me, don't question me about my uh, be interest in a reparation. Talk about, talk about some girls now. Girls. We want to talk about girls. 
What kind of girls? Any kind of girls. Talk about girls now. Don't talk me you now why you're not more about no reparation from you personally because you is intend to fight. And I nothing to no fight in here right now against Rasta. We have too much fight after go on. No, fight me not Rasta. talk about me not talk about fight against Rasta. Me not talk about reparation against the state that was took place against don't, Rasta for a right. I don't want to talk not more to you about no reparation of Rasta for a right. Because so the, why are you questioning me about why are you questioning me about that? Why are you questioning me about it for? Why are you because, questioning me about it? It, it now seems like that is into the ear of the eye them for well, defend it, the case against the, the, just, well, the injustice you don't see that we are, right now the rest. Well, see them like, oh, you don't feel say you feel say that the people, they must get hard it. Find mm. some way for now, for discredit me now. Find some way for discredit me. Say, Muta no interest in them thing there, you know. You might this and you might that. Just like what you talk about, you know, Rasta there. No, you can't tell me how me you put it to the eye. Well, don't question me. I assure the, I assure don't the eye, me. sir. Don't question Since me. Since you are talking about I reparation. Bridget. You are talking about reparation. Look at me now. I'm going to lock you off, you know. You are not talking about reparation. You don't want to hear about no, reparation. No, 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 no. I don't. Not from you. Not from you. Not from oh. you. I don't want to hear from you. Anyway, so you have to move, your Bridget. You have to move. Yes, this is the Cutting Edge and IRFM, you know, so we'll be back here a little more from 2 to 5, 4 to 5, with the stepping razor, the art of war. You know, the bridging just broke my vibes a while ago in relationship to where me that try bring cross to the people, them, this black instrument, you know, to bring up something where do have no nothing to do with nothing more than him of a personal thing against a group of Rasta. And Rasta seem to have fallen at the same trap like people who they fight against. Because I don't know why him have this animosity against this committee. And him don't want to do something. He might try to get the whole world involved in a film fight against the committee. I do have not against the committee. I do have not against this committee. It's him of the two fives against the committee. Why am I bring me in it? Don't bring me in it, Regine. I'm not going to help you fight against the committee. I do have not against them. You understand? And we have spent so much time I try to discredit each other. That we have missed the boat. You know? And me can't but I go fight against Rasta when other things are fight against we. Me can't bother with the fight against Rasta. You understand? I mean, no, say all for Rasta are fighting against all for Rasta out there, but me can't bother take up that strain from my brains. You understand? For go find Auditor General, for go audit Rasta because me no feel say they might deal with the funds properly and them thing there. Where, 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 where you bring me not that for Bridging? No bring me not that man. No bring me not that. Me na, me na, me no, me, 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 me mind, me old calm and my old perspective is not into that. We're talking about reparation for the atrocities that the government do against Afri um, against Rasta. We're talking about reparation for the atrocities that Europeans did against black people. We're talking about reparation for Pinnacle. There's so much thing that we're talking about and trying to figure out. I don't have no time now to talk about a group of Rasta who I don't trust. And I need now Jamaican people of concern, my for concern. Jamaican people don't care a damn about that. To be honest with you, Jamaican people don't business with that. That is some internal affair where you bring from the radio here, so no, just because you have a thing against certain ones in the organization. It's crazy. It's really, really crazy. And I'm very glad that it's so two o'clock because my whole perspective, the British come brought the whole perspective. Dark as shade of black. To give thanks to the moment, give thanks to the time and the energy with the matrix. I set up him advertisement, them rush me out of the studio. <laughs> matrix, I set up him advertisement, them fans. <laughs> left y'all you know. <laughs> so give thanks to the moment and the time, man. And as we say, we're going to come forward here, stepping razor, the art of war. You know, so it's a different program that from this program. You understand? So, 
Sunday, well, Friday, no, not Friday, Saturday, Rio Bueno, we will be there performing. And Sunday morning, bright and early, 6 o'clock, with the Dung Apita Tash family place, celebrating the life and works of Peter Tash, the man who said legalized ganja, and ganja was like a bad word. If you just say it now, you're, you're out. So, we're going with this, you know, at this we're going with. 